A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own, unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. And people will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I think we can all agree this evening on one thing, that we're living in the age of computers and the internet. And we know that we can reach anyone instantly, anywhere in the world. And emails travel around the world in a split second. And we also know that the internet helps us to find information that would take months of research in a library. And then now we have cameras on computers or smartphones that allow us to take pictures or speak to people face to face. And this Microsoft and Google and Apple technology that was been around for the last 10 or 20 years was just impossible before those times. In no other time in human history have we been so electronically connected to one another as we are today. Now, Many will say, our connections through this wonderful technology, it's just more than a convenience. Some say, it's a necessity anymore to get anything done. But there's a downside. And the downside is that people panic when they lose their cell phones, including yours truly. Or if you leave home or the office and you left your phone there. Our jobs, expect us to immediately return messages, even when we're not working. That's a downside. And because we can check emails and voicemails at any time, our cell phones and our computers and our iPads are kind of like glued to us, just in case someone's trying to reach us. And if we send a text message or an email to somebody, and we don't immediately receive an answer, guess what? We panic, we wonder if we're being ignored, or the person we're trying to reach is angry with us. I think it's all of this technology is driving many people crazy. And the bad news out of all this today is that people have shorter attention spans, we're reading a whole lot less than we used to before, and we're trying to do too many things at once. We call it multitasking. We're constantly being distracted by this wonderful technology. So this gift of technology that's actually supposed to be drawing us a lot closer together is actually isolating us. And it, although we think we're more connected than ever, we're really kind of disconnected. Let me give you a couple examples. How many families and, and their children, when they're in the house, they just drift off into their own rooms 
checking social media, or playing mindless computer games for hours. Does that sound familiar? How often at restaurants do we notice families or friends sitting around the table, staring at their cell phones, in their hands, connecting with everyone except the person that they're sitting at the table with? And we laugh about it. It's not funny. That's getting pretty bad. You see, I think we're losing our ability to grow relationships or to talk face to face with people and love other people directly. That's what it's doing to us. So today our gospel describes our need to be connected in a way that matters the most. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Are these words old-fashioned in the 21st century? I think not, because you see, Jesus wants us to connect with him. And he warns us that unless we're connected to him, unless we're faithful to him, we won't be capable of doing anything. Picture this for a moment. What happens when a branch is snapped off a tree or somebody puts a chainsaw to it? It becomes lifeless. It's dead. And the same is true for us. We will have no real life or purpose in life or joy when we're disconnected from our Lord and Savior Jesus. You see, we become as useless as a computer without the internet or a cell phone with a dead battery. Think about that. Now, how hard is it to connect with Jesus? Well, connecting with him doesn't require an iPhone or Facebook or Twitter. We don't even have to be plugged into a Wi-Fi network. Our connection with Jesus begins with practicing silence. Remember that word, silence? And quieting our minds and listening to him and speaking to us. He's always there to guide us, day or night. And through the liturgy of our church and the thousands of beautiful prayers of our Catholic faith, our minds can be disciplined on connecting with Jesus, but it will require silence. Silence in our minds and in our hearts and in our souls. And I suspect in this modern age, many of us are afraid of silence. So I think a simple and a sincere prayer from our hearts to our Lord Jesus is all it begins to start this connection I'm speaking of. St. John describes this final connection with Jesus in today's second reading. We're instructed that we're connected with him and remain in him if we keep his commandment of love. The power to love and to feel love only comes from Jesus. And it's more than this romantic feeling of love or maintaining a familial love of our parents and our family. Here's what it really means. It means loving our enemies just as Jesus did as he hung upon the cross. Or forgiving people who go out of their way to hurt us. Loving them is not easy. But it means sacrificing ourselves for strangers when we see them suffering and not just turning the other way thinking it's someone else's problem. It means going out of our way to connect with those whom society doesn't give a darn about anymore. This life-saving love is the connection our hearts and minds and souls, that's what we see, but it often gets drowned out in the self-absorbed noise of 21st century technology. We experience it and live it when we are connected with Jesus 
through the sacraments and through the Mass. The fact is that technology often separates us and isolates us. And we're, but we're hearing the same readings as Catholics all around the world. That's the connection. How about Catholics in the Middle East who are being murdered as we speak for their faith? The same with Catholics and Christians in Africa. And Catholics in Asia are hearing the same words here at Mass, and they're being discriminated against by their governments, while Catholics in South America are suffering from corruption and horrible economies. And what about those Catholics in Europe listening to the same readings as we do, and they're struggling to even be relevant? And then here in North America, what's going on? We're faced with the temptations of materialism and the good life. Here's the good news. In this church, right here, we're joined together by our common prayer and the Eucharist. Our deepest and most real connection in this world must be in the belief of the body of Christ connecting us to the risen Jesus himself. And then to our brothers and sisters who are sharing the Eucharist with us all around the world. By confessing our sins, by remaining in the state of grace and receiving the body of Christ, we become one body of Christ, connected to Jesus and then to one another all around the world. No Microsoft or Apple or Google technology no matter how advanced they get, can ever achieve what our Lord achieves throughout his church. So don't get me wrong, I'm not up here condemning technology and computers because of some of the negative effects. I'm not doing that. You see, our ability to communicate quickly and receive news instantly, I think it can be a pretty good thing. But we have to be clear about how computers and smartphones are hurting our relationships and hurting our spiritual lives. We must be careful that we're not becoming enslaved to the contraptions that are supposed to serve us. So I'm going to end with this one hopefully provoking thought. What would the world be like if we fell to our knees in silent prayer as often as we checked our text messages or our Facebook status. Think about that for a moment. Imagine if we were as quick to reach out in love to a person standing right next to us as we were to call someone on our iPhones or through Skype. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.